Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Qualcomm have just announced a new Snapdragon chip that they say is gonna be built on five nanometers. That means it's confirming all of our expectations about the shift from seven nanometers to five nanometers and gives us quite a lot of information about the next generation of smartphone processors that we're gonna see. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so what Qualcomm have announced is a new 5G modem, the X60, which will be built on five nanometers. Now the X60 builds on the previous uh, modem, the X55, which is built on seven nanometers, adds some nice new features. But what we're looking at today is the fact that they've said they're committing themselves to this being a five nanometer part. Now, before we delve into what does five nanometers mean, let's have a look at the idea of the process node and how chips are actually manufactured at different sizes. Now you've probably heard terms like 90 nanometers and 45 nanometers and 32 nanometers and 16 nanometers and so on and so on when it comes to describing the chips also in our smartphones, also in our desktops and our laptops and so on. Now basically uh, chips are made up of transistors, they are switches and when you run those switches in a certain way you can get logic produced so you can fiddle with ones and zeros and then obviously very complicated, millions and millions of transistors, you can actually generate uh, CPUs, GPUs, and all the kind of things that we're used to using today. Now these are made, of course, here, on silicon chips, and there is basically each transistor has some properties. Now, traditionally those properties were the gate length and the pitch. Now, we don't need to worry too much about what they are, but think about it, a transistor is an actual 3D thing and it's gonna have some properties to it. Let's turn that into width and length and height, for example. Now, when you want to pack more transistors into the same area, you're gonna to need to make that transistor smaller. And so they would change the gate length and the gate uh, pitch, okay? And that would enable them to make the transistor smaller so you can pack in more transistors. Now, smaller transistors are more power efficient and they are faster and you can get more of them into every millimeter squared. So smaller is better in this sense. So why do we go from example from 90 nanometers to 65 nanometers to 45 nanometers to 32? Where are these numbers? They seem to be random numbers, but actually they're not. The transistor features that I've just described were related to that nanometer number in the past. And basically when you want to pack in more transistors, you need to change let's call it the width and the breadth, you've got this pitch and you've got the, the, the length, as I said, but you need to change them by a factor of 0 0.7, not by half, by 0 0.7, because if you change one dimension by 0 0.7 and the other dimension by 0 0.7, you've actually, 0 0.7 times by 0 0.7 is 0 0.5, so you actually double the density. So that's why these numbers jump as they do, and that's because they're actually going down by a factor of 0 0.7 each time. And you can see that most clearly with 10 nanometers to seven nanometers. Why 10 to seven? Well, because it's 0.7 of 10, of course, it is seven. And now we're talking about five nanometers. Now, as I said, that nanometer number was something related to some of the physical properties of the transistors in the past. However, that kind of been lost over time, particularly once we got to FinFET transistors, because the way the transistor is put together, its physical characteristics are different. It's got fins on it, which is why it's called a FinFET. Okay, and so actually you can't use those same numbers. There isn't actually anything that is seven nanometers wide or tall or high or gap or whatever in a seven nanometer process but it's a reflection of the fact that it's trying to double the density that you got in 10 nanometers by multiplying different characteristics by 0.7 so you go from 10 to 7 and that was true of all the other ones going up before that so really these are marketing terms rather than technical terms to try to show that this new chip has a greater transistor density than the chip before. But of course, because we're now getting into marketing, it means, well, one company might claim to have a certain type of uh, density and another company might claim to have a certain type of density and actually they're very different, but they're both using seven nanometer or 10 nanometer. So if you look at actually Intel and TSMC and Samsung, they've actually got different characteristics about their seven or their 10 nanometer uh, process nodes. And you actually, it's not necessarily a direct correlation to what they really have. 
And also it's interesting that each of these companies have different variations of their own processes. So Samsung have got a couple of seven nanometer nodes and TSMC have got a couple of seven nanometer nodes and one is better than the other, which means it's got a greater density. The transistors are smaller, which means they're more power efficient, but they're still called seven or seven plus or seven LP. You know, they've got all these different uh, names, but really the seven idea or the 10 or the 14 is just to try to get through to consumer that this is better than the one before. So how this is related to Qualcomm's announcement is they've said that the X60 modem will be built on five nanometers and that they will be shipping it to their partners this quarter, which means they're gonna be actual five nanometer chips sent to smartphone manufacturers so they can continue their design of the next generation of smartphones. And that we will see a five nanometer X60 modems in 2021. That means the devices we see launched this time next year will have five nanometer modems in them. Now you can be pretty sure that if it's got a five nanometer modem, it's also gonna have a five nanometer processor. So the way it works is this ARM will announce their new CPU, possibly new GPU designs sometime in the spring, early summer of this year, the Cortex A78, who knows whatever it's gonna, the marketing people call it. And in that they will talk about performance improvements because of the micro architecture, the way they've designed it, the way it actually does the work. And they'll also say there are now also performance improvements because of the move to five nanometers. And then we fast forward a bit and in December, if history repeats itself, Qualcomm will have its tech summit and it will announce the new Qualcomm processor and it will be, let's say the 875, and they'll say it's a five nanometer processor. It's got the Cortex C P U in it that ARM announced earlier in the year. And then at some point, there'll be new phones announced in early 2021, the Samsung Galaxy S21, whatever they call it. And it will have the 875 in it at five nanometer with a five nanometer 5G modem and so on and so on. So what this basically tells us is that we are gonna see improvements in terms of performance and power efficiency because of microarchitecture designs and because of the move to five nanometers. And we're gonna see those in smartphones in 2021. So from Qualcomm's announcement about the X60 modem, we can now draw out some very logical deductions about the mobile processors that we're gonna see in 2021 from Qualcomm itself, but also of course from companies like Samsung. Now talking about Samsung, Samsung and TSMC both have five nanometer uh, processes uh, in development. And it looks at the moment as if TSMC's five nanometer is better than Samsung's uh, five nanometer. But after the X60 was announced, lots of rumor sites started saying that it was actually Samsung that was gonna be manufacturing the X60. So it looks like if they're correct, that the uh, five nanometer will be Samsung's five nanometer. And we'll have to wait and see to s what happens with TSMC's five nanometer, whether processes are built with that, whether it's built with Samsung, it's all to do with contracts and money and whether it's available and the kind of volume they can ship and when it will be ready and how much they're gonna charge. All that kind of stuff has to get sorted out. And in the end, chips from different companies like uh, Qualcomm and Apple probably, uh, and Samsung themselves, MediaTek, all these companies, uh, Huawei, they're gonna start using someone's five nanometer process to actually make their chips. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'll see you in the next one.